Hello and welcome to Push's Unchain Your Brain session on study skills. My name is Johnny Rich, which is unlikely, but true. And I'm going to be running this session telling you a bit about how the brain works and how we can hijack the brain to do it, its job better, how we can use it. We can sh shake off the shackles and use it to its full potential to learn and make learning more interesting, more fun. So let's start off with a game, a memory game. I'm sure you've all played this game before, but I'm going to whip away this, um, this satin sheet and show you a number of objects. I want you to try and remember as many objects as you can. You'll have about 15 seconds. Now, the thing is, I'm going to carry on talking whilst um, you're trying to remember them, which is really distracting and isn't going to help you at all. But I'm going to carry on talking anyway, just because I want to prove something to you about how difficult it is to remember things when people keep talking. So how many can you remember? If you remembered three, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, four, five. If you remembered six or seven, you're doing extremely well. And if you remembered all of them, you're amazing. You've, you, you can switch this off now. You probably don't need this session. Um, there they all were again. So, yeah, there were, there were 12 objects in, in total. And most people will not remember, given the 15 seconds, more than a few of them. So we're going to do that again. And this time I'm going to give you some different objects. And this time... Although I'm going to be talking all the way through, I'm going to be talking in a more helpful way. I'm going to be saying some stuff that I hope will help you to remember them. So listen to what I'm saying and look at the objects as I say them. OK, I'll also use my pointer to point out the right objects. OK, so here we go. Ready? Once upon a time, there was a girl named Rose and Rose was lying in bed when her alarm clock went off. She got out of bed and she stepped on some Lego. She went ow and ran to the bathroom to get a plaster. While she was there, the doorbell rang and so she went down to answer it. And there was a dragon wearing sunglasses. The dragon said, my fire won't, my breath won't. I can't breathe fire anymore. And she said, let me just write that down. So she went to get a pencil, but the pencil was blunt, so she had to sharpen it. Then she went to get some matches and she said, don't panic, I can help you. And she relit his fire with the matches. He was so pleased he gave her a Milky Way. Now, the chances are that we can probably remember most of those items now, especially if we retell the story. So there was a girl called rose she was lying in bed and the alarm clock went off and she got out of bed and she trod on a lego um she ran to the bathroom and got um a plaster uh, the door bell went off um there was a dragon wearing sunglasses uh, who said my fire has gone out so she went to get a pencil to write that down the pencil was blunt so she needed a sharpener um she then went back to him and said don't panic and she used the matches to relight his fire and he gave her a milky way that was all of them we rem we remembered every single one i think yep so what we're seeing there is that you can remember things if you put them in a sequence if you connect them what we're talking about here is how to learn. Now, we're going to be going through in this session what learning is, um, learning how to learn. We're going to be talking about the cope attitude, which makes learning not only more manageable, but more fun. And we're going to be talking about some revision tips and nailing exams. Uh, and I thought I'd show you some pictures along the way. So here's a pretty picture. We might come back to that picture later. But first of all, let's think about learning. What is learning? Learn learning is basically remembering. It's just memory. So all we're talking about here is deciding what to remember. Because we can't help but remember stuff the whole time. We are learning all the time, whether we like it or not. You know, you can think about what your earliest memory is and, you know, try to make it maybe a happy memory or, or one that isn't too upsetting. But try to come up with an early, early memory. 
and think about what it is you remember about that memory. For most of us, what we remember and why we remember it is because maybe we were, it was an extremely happy moment. It was a really um, joyful moment. Uh, maybe it was an early birthday party and you were really excited, or perhaps you, it was, you know, meeting a dog or a baby for the first time or something like that. Uh, or maybe it was a very scary moment, a moment when you thought you were in great danger. Now, we tend to remember things because they make us feel something, either happiness or fear. Those are the two main things that drive memories. Fear, happiness, disgust, these basic emotions are the things that we tend, that tend to make things stick in our memory. There's a really good reason for that. It's because we have evolved over time as animals, as human animals, to remember the stuff that helps us survive. The stuff that helps us survive is the stuff that um, gives us a reward, i.e. makes us happy, or the stuff that keeps us safe, so keeps us away from the danger of um, the danger from dangerous situations, basically. So if we think about memory, I'm going to tell you about a guy called Marcel, Marcel Proust, who was a French writer around about the end of the 19th century. And this guy, Marcel, he went to visit his aunt at her apartment in Paris. This was when he was all grown up. And um, he, or her appartement, as they would say in France. Anyway, she she gave him some tea, a cup of tea, um, and some of these sort of cakey biscuits that they have in France. These are called madeleines. And these madeleines, um, she, um, when he dipped it in the tea, which is what he always used to do as a kid, he dipped it in the tea and then raised it to his mouth to to eat it and he got this whiff this this smell and this smell instantly brought back his childhood it zoomed him back to dipping the madeleine in the tea when he was a little boy and suddenly he had this rush of memories from his youth as a as a little boy in a village called Combray and that memory was brought back another memory which brought back another memory which brought back another memory and each there was this sort of cascade of memories triggered by each other until and he started to write them down and he wrote them down and pretty soon he had written one and a half million words um one of the greatest novels ever written as far as many people are concerned called in search of lost time and it was published in multiple volumes and um has many people think changed how writers write about memory and how they recall the past and how often the past is not entirely reliable. Anyway, and if you want to, um, another example of this, if you've seen the movie Ratatouille, uh, towards the end, there's the critic and he tries the ratatouille and you get this flood he go he suddenly remembers his childhood the taste of the ratatouille brings back all the rush of being a little boy and his mother giving him ratatouille as a kid anyway what this tells us is some important things about how memory works it tells us memory is fed by the senses by smells by tastes yes by sight but actually i'm sure anybody who's who can smell has had an experience where they go oh yeah that print that that somebody else used to wear that perfume who was it or that smell oh this takes me back to that day by the seaside or something like that so you smells trigger memories hearing sight all all the senses bring back memories it's also powered by feeling so senses are how the memories get in there and the ones we choose to store really, really clearly are the ones that make us feel really strong things, um, happiness, fear, disgust, um, etc. So there's a, and there's a third thing as well, which is that they're connected by links. There's this idea of one memory triggers another, triggers another, triggers another, 